Hi. Looking at the original Sinclair microdrive and the B drive ZX, you can hardly tell them apart. Essentially, the main difference is that the original microdrive uses one of those, the original spinning tape microdrive cartridge, whereas the B drive ZX uses the familiar modern SD card. The great thing about the V-Drive ZX using the standard Sinclair Interface 1 is the experience is almost identical to using the real microdrive and also it means any add-on interfaces you might want to add to your spectrum um, if they're original ones are most likely to work and not conflict with it in any way. Being 100% compatible with the Interface 1 the V-Drive ZX uses all the standard Interface 1 commands. But it also offers the addition of some shortcuts which makes life a lot more easier. For example, if I want to see what's in Microdrive 7, I would catalogue it, or cat. I just need to do dot .c7, uh, looking for all the files, and it's going to print out a standard catalogue. There it is. Similarly, um, if I want to load a program, all I need to do is go L for load, 7 for the microdrive number, it's 7 in that bank, and then the name of the program. Um, I'll do, let's do Bruce Lee, B O S E L E E, and hit the button. So now it's loading briefly, as simple as that. And you can hear that little beep. That is the three drives of this go. There we are, briefly. Of course, on a Spectrum, you can get eight standard original micro drives. Amazingly, with the V drive ZX, you can get sets of eight microdrives on one VZ drive X, i.e. it's like being able to have a bunches and bunches of eight microdrives and just being able to take one of those bunches and attach them to your spectrum at any time. Again, uh, very simple syntax uh, to access banks, etc. But I'll show you to list a bank, guess what? It's LB. So that'll list all the banks, sorry, all the banks. So there we are. Um, I've probably got a bit carried away here because I've got over 150 banks uh, on my SD card. Um, to look at a particular bank, you select it. So you do select bank, um, let's say L-A-N, that's a bank I've got. Okay, uh, selected that bank. Now what I want to do is look at that bank. So basically here we're talking about eight virtual micro drives with cartridges with programs on them so i'll do lv and that lists um, what's in that bank and what you can see there is what i've got on each micro drive one to eight um, both the name of the micro drive and also the name of the cartridge that's in that micro drive With over 600 programs on my SD card, I now of course have given myself a little bit of a problem because I have no means of easily browsing all my programs um, or knowing where one particular one is uh, because what I need to do is know the bank it's in, select the bank, um, I then need to list the microdrives in that bank uh, I then need to know what's on those microdrives by doing a catalogue to see the actual programs. So to solve this problem, I decided I'd write my first master file database file. And I've put it on my ZXC4 programmable ROM cartridge. So when I turn my machine on, I can go straight into my, what I've called, 
Paul's V-Drive catalog. So I go straight into that and it's ready for me to search for any program. Let's search for programs with Jet. So here we go. I've got four records. Let's display those records. Here we go. We've got, let's say, Jetpack, Jet Set Willys. Uh, we've got on the next page Jet Set Willy with the Bug Fist, Bug Fixed uh, 2015 edition. And we've got Jet Ski. Oh, I don't know about that one. Um, so what this tells me is, let's say, having looked at that, I wanted to explore Jet Ski. We'll go and get that. Well, I know straight away that I need to go to Bank ZX032. Um, the MDR name is the same. I've done that quite often because it makes it easier to find it. Um, and then I'm there. It's as simple as that. I've also got a note field because um, in some of the uh, records I've put a cheat or some sort of bit of interesting information um, about the program or programs that are in that particular record. One of the really great things you can do with a V-Drive ZX is create original microdrive cartridges from MDRs. Uh, there's two ways you can do this. You can download existing MDRs or you can use Z80 on MDR to create an MDR of any Z80 snapshot. I recreated the ZX Spectrum expansion system here we are here, from downloaded MDRs. And uh, all these cartridges are, in fact, new cartridges, I call them new, um, which have been populated with the original MDRs. In fact, the introduction cartridge at the top is actually an original cartridge, um, but it needed um, to be fixed. Um, and writing the MDR to it resolved that problem. So I've now recreated this and it's pretty much, uh, it's in its original sleeve and it's pretty much um, as the original would have been. So just to show you how you do it, because it's very, very simple, um, I use Clive Copy um, and um, I simply go to Clive Copy Hit a key for menu and take the option DD, which actually means microdrive to microdrive copy. And um, I can do a catalog for the drive, so let's see what is in the V drive. There we are. So uh, in the V drive, because I've selected that bank previously, is the business or the expansion system cartridge um, with all the programs it comes with. So I could enter a file name, but in this case I don't want to copy just one file to the real cartridge. I want to copy the whole thing. So I just press enter from drive one. That's what I was just looking at, the V drive or V drive ZX. Drive two is the real cartridge. Um, and you'll hear that because instead of beeping, it makes the proper noise. So to drive two and now Clive Copy is reading the catalogue from the virtual microdrive, the MDR. And here it is, it's reading them. And now you can hear it. Writing that file to the real microdrive cartridge on the real microdrive, which is microdrive 2. And so on. It really is as simple as that. And of course, with Tom Dolby's um, Z80 on MDR, I mean, basically, any um, program you snapshot the emulator uh, as a Z80 um, can be written to an MDR, and then the MDR can be written to a real cartridge. So you can create um, as, as many things as you like on real cartridges. Now obviously, the reason I use the V-Drive ZX most of the time is that 
I want to preserve my real micro drives and my real cartridges. Uh, after all, I don't make the cartridges anymore. And whilst you can still get them readily um, on eBay and other places, um, they do need um, to uh, have the, um, the fairy bit, whatever it's called, under the tape replaced. Um, because after a period of time, uh, many years, they tend to, those brushes tend to dry out, that spongy thing tends to dry out, and then it just turns to dust. Um, and that can damage your micro drive if you put one of those in there and the dust gets in the micro drive. And of course it won't work because it's, it's not going to put pressure against the tape on the tape head of the micro drive. So uh, you also have the hassle of either have to do doing that yourself, that's replacing those little um, spongy bits, um, which is, um, at least for me, a bit of a nightmare because it's, it's very, very tiny. You probably need a hands-free system, which is what I've got, and you definitely need a magnifying, magnifying glass and a steady hand to put those on. So, um, having spent a few, few many hours doing about 30 of those, um, I've decided that if I ever need any more, I'll um, buy some from some of the people that uh, are prepared to do that and sell them to you, re, re, um, rebushed, whatever, I can't remember the phrase for that. Um, that so. Felt. So, having uh, copied the um, MDR to the real cartridge, let's uh, run the real cartridge. So I'm just going to load from microdrive 2, which is the real microdrive with the real microdrive cartridge in it, to see what we've created. And there we are. That's it. We have the business cartridge, which is from the Spectrum Expansion System, which was um, an MDR and has now been written to a real cartridge.